Red Nut Cooking 101. Aluminum. What I'll be doing today is pretty much putting aluminum into bars and in stock. So what I'll be doing, I'll be having to get some fresh dirt, but I'm going to need to sift out all the rocks. i got a gardener there, that's where I'll be getting it from. But I'll be sticking this in this block, pack around with dirt as hard as I can, pull this out, and have a nice little hollow cylinder I can use. Pour the aluminum in it. Get it, out, get it out of can form and out of uh, nugget form, I guess. But this uh, tube is also the same diameter of a part I plan to make from scratch to save myself a few dollars. If I have it on me, I'll show you, but I don't. But I had it with me anyway. It's for a heat sink for my lightsaber builds. I plan to... It's the exact same diameter. After melting it into bars, I plan to taking it to my grandpa's... Uh, my uh, grandpa's, I guess you, I guess it's a belt type cutting machine. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the exact term, but uh, it it's pretty much a hacksaw and crack, and I plan on cutting it to uh, slices, pretty much like a like a <laughs> like a chunk of bologna, I guess is would be the term for it. And I plan on using it for my heat sinks. Anyway, enough blabbering, blabbering on. Let's uh, let's make some aluminum bars. My uh, method for getting uh, soil plan on using for my forms is cruel and unusual, but there's nothing the feds can do about it. Anyway, this is just a wire mesh. It came from a little uh, little cage I found laying around in the woods, and this is the pen keeping it in that. Anyway, it's quite simple. Just get a bunch of dirt. Look over that, of course. Get a bunch of dirt in there. Shake all the chunks. And there you go. Rinse and repeat about a couple thousand times, and you've got a nice pile of dirt. All right, for my form. All right, started this one, but you pretty much just uh, pack a nice layer on the bottom. You stick your uh, whatever you want to form in there. I already got some around it, packed it in so it'll hold itself. And then you pretty much just fill it in. Make sure that it's uh, as packed as much as possible. We want to make sure you can still get your uh, form out, so you get a cast it without making things burn and smell funny. Anyway, pretty simple process. Put in dirt, pack it down, pull it out. I'm planning on using this for uh, uh, the part I'm not going to call for heat sinks. It's just pretty much going to be my aluminum stock to either reuse or if I plan on not messing with aluminum anymore I can just take it to the scrap yard and get a buck out of it. Anyway, that's how that process goes. You can do all sorts of things, even odd shaped things, but it requires more elaborate uh, forming. Like if it's like a, a shape of something, it's pretty much like two halves of uh, actual like wooden forms with each half of your product in it. Then you uh, pack each side individually, pull the product out, carefully put the two halves together and have a little hole there and pour it, pour it that way. That's a little bit more advanced forming. This is this is pretty dang simple. Now that my form is made, let's fire up the grill. I mean, porridge. <laughs> anyway, there's a uh, trick to lighting these things. Coal can be kind of tricky to light. But when you have an air source in knowledge, it's quite easy. What are you supposed to do it? Like a little device that looks something like this. See if I can get you guys to get the right angle here. Might be aiming a little high. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. Dig your forge down to the uh, air inlet. Oh, down to your grill. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I got a little special juice here. Special juice that has balls. Actually, it's just lighter fluid. I hate, I hate when I light paper. I might be able to light it, throw it down, and start. I'll just use a little drop to help me get the paper lit. Anyway, like this. Put it down. Put your air on. And bury it.
I wouldn't recommend using lighter fluid in indoor areas. I mean, coal alone is already toxic enough with all this sulfur output. So try to keep down the chemicals as much as possible, especially in indoors. And that would be the fastest way to light a forge. Fastest, most efficient, easiest. After those coals get nice and red and hot, I get a why they call a uh, coke or uh, coal dirty power this is why I'm turning my coke into coal so it would burn cleaner and I could be over here without choking on this stuff coke is pretty much coal in a, like the purest form and uh, this is what it does when it turns into that pure form it gives off its dirtiness as this big cloud of death a lot of sulfur. You can actually see from the yellowish how much sulfur is in that. Do not want to breathe that in. The second that touches air, it turns into uh, sulfuric acid. Same stuff that's in acid rain that eats away at car paint and anything else. Very nasty stuff. Can't wait till it gets clean so I can actually get out there and start melting things. Turning that one little pot of uh, coal into coke. Did this for my entire grandpa's piece of property here. Everywhere, thick clouds. Just from that one little pile of coal. And now you know why there's so many people against coal power. Yes, it's a very efficient source of energy. Is it green? Oh no, far from it. I hate being the type of person that has to use this stuff, but nothing gets hotter. Well, except for gas, but that's a little complex uh, type of forge. A lot of uh, a lot of technique going to that. A lot of expensive parts, and well, I'm not exactly rich enough to make a gas forge. This is rather cheap, actually. Satellite dish, some old plumbing parts, and some sort of a uh, scroll cage type van thing. For example, heading is a uh, garage. Total cost about 30 bucks for this thing. Pretty cheap. Coal. It's not another reason why it's being used. It's because it's well, as cheap as rocks. Wonder why. <laughs> and let the cooking commence. So this can be tricky because my forge actually gets hot enough to actually melt cast iron. So I have to keep an eye on the uh, temperature on the pan there because if it gets too hot, gets a hole in it, and then and then I got a forge full of molten aluminum. And that does not feel like fun cleaning up. You can hear, uh, hear them sizzling. Now that some of the aluminum has turned into a liquid form, and I also found the butter zone for my uh, forge, just the right fan speed so that it's not getting the uh, cast so hot and worrying about it. It's uh, like a, a, a nice warm red, so I don't have to worry about it burning the cast or melting the cast anyway. And it's hot enough to... Uh, just aluminum right into liquid pretty much instantly. It's really nice. Redneck cooking. Mm -mm. Also, if you're uh, if you know a scrapyard that uh, that has really good prices that you're very satisfied with, but you don't want to be hauling like a bunch of scrap, like you want to turn your cans into a smaller form. I mean, I, this could be more work and probably isn't really worth it, but just an idea. Make your aluminum a little bit more transportable. Mmm, look at that. that. Wonderful aluminum slurry. That's gunk. Don't know what that, I don't know if that's actually got aluminum in it or not, so... I'm going to start saving it. It's stuff that won't melt. I guess it's like remains of paint and other stuff. We'll find out when I get that thing full and dip it in my quench pan. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested to see how, uh, how fast this thing can turn a can into a pile of goo. <laughs> oh, that's awesome.